Hey again guys, uh, today we're going to be looking um, at a concept very similar to what we did in the last lesson. In the last lesson we were solving inequalities with addition and subtraction. Today we're going to look at inequalities uh, that we would solve using division and multiplication. And again, you'll notice your rules are very much the same. This is very similar to what we did with equations. This is very similar to what we did with addition and subtraction with one additional rule, which I'll talk about on the next board. So again, remember, when we're solving inequalities, we still follow the same rules and the same patterns of solving equations. We need to keep it balanced. Whatever I do to one side of my inequality, I need to do to the other side of my inequality to keep it a true statement. Um, we also need to isolate the variable. Once we have the variable by itself, we'll know which values work to make it a true statement for our answer. Um, and again, you'll notice my little side note, the only difference between solving inequalities uh, and equations is the fact that there's more than one number that will make the statement true in an inequality. Here is our one excess rule. Uh, we get a little bit tricky when we have a negative number that we divide or we multiply by. If I multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, it does something to my inequality sign. It flip-flops it. Okay? Um, it, kind of the same way when you multiply a number by a negative, it makes it negative. It kind of does the same thing with our, our inequality signs. It just it flip-flops them to face the other way. So that's what you need to remember. And the other ones I was kept telling you, make sure you keep it in this, facing the same direction. Here, there are certain times where we need to flip it, but certain times where you don't want to. Only if we're multiplying or dividing by a negative number do we um, change the, the flip-flop our inequality sign. So I'm giving you an example here. I have c divided by negative 5. So we'll remember that um, when we were solving equations, the inverse operation for a division was multiplication. Same thing here. So I have c divided by 5 is less than or equal to 13. How am I going to get c by itself? I'm going to multiply by the same number to get rid of this. I'm going to multiply by the negative 5, which I've done over here. Multiplying by negative 5 on both sides. My 5s are going to cancel, so I'm left with c. 13 times negative 5 is negative 65. But I need to flip-flop my sign now because of the negative. And if that confuses you, go back and check your answer and make sure you're right. So here I'm saying um, values that are greater than negative 65 will work. So let's pick a value that's greater than um, negative 65. And think about uh, negative 65. Negative 70 is less than, so don't get confused and try to pick that. Less than negative 65 means I'm going um, to the right on my uh, number line. So negative 60 is actually greater than negative 65. Why? Because I'd rather only owe $60 as opposed to 65. Ideally, I'd like to owe nothing, but I went to college, so I owe a lot. Uh, sidebar, sorry. So let's pick negative 60. If I plug negative 60 in here and I divide by negative 5, I have two negatives, so that means my answer is going to be positive. 60 divided by 5 gives me 12. 12 is indeed less than 13, so my answer is correct. So always you can go back and check to make sure that you've flipped your sign the right way. And what you'll notice is if you didn't flip your sign the right way, you're going to wind up with an untrue statement, and that might help remind you, oh yeah, I had to flip that and multiply it or divide it by a negative number. All right? So we're going to look at some examples here. And remember, that rule of flipping is only if we're multiplying or dividing by a negative, not if we're multiplying or dividing by a positive. So we don't always flip the sign. There's only certain times. <coughs> so for example, here, I have a positive number. I have a positive 4 that I'm dividing by. y divided by 4 is greater than 11. So how am I going to undo my division? Well, I'm going to undo it using multiplication. Here, my 4s are going to cancel. I'm left with a y. I multiplied by a positive number, so I'm not changing the sign. The sign is staying the exact same way. It's still greater than sign. Let, um, since I multiplied this by, side by 4, I have to multiply the other side by 4 as well. 11 times 4 gives me 44. So numbers that are greater than 44 will give me an answer in this equation that's greater than 11. And again, we can check it. Um, here I would pick 48 just because it will go in evenly. Four divided, uh, 48 divided by 4 gives me 12. 12 is greater than 11, so I know that I'm right. So if we wanted to graph that, we're going to mark 11. This is not equal to, so I'm going to use an open stick circle. 
Um, and here, remember my variables on the left, so I can use my trick rule where that's going to show me the way that it's facing. But I'm looking for values greater than 44, and sorry, I just wrote the wrong numbers down here because I too was not paying attention. This is always the number that we want to mark, and then we want to show which way our arrows go. All right, if you look here, I'm dividing by a negative. I've got P divided by negative 3 is less than 12. So how am I going to undo my division? I'm going to multiply. I'm now multiplying by a negative, which means when I get to my answer, my sign is going to flip-flop in the opposite direction. And you'll notice when I write this, I write my negative 3 on the top. That's just because I write it as if it were a fraction, because that makes it a little easier in my head. These numbers would cancel. P over 1 is the same as P. That's kind of why I, I write it that way. So on this side, they cancel. I wind up with P. 12 times negative 3 gives me negative 36. So I'm looking for values that are greater than negative 36. So negative 36 is the number I'm going to mark here. And then remember, we're dealing with a negative, so our numbers are flip-flopped because we're on the mirrored or the opposite side of our number line. It's not equal to, so I'm going to use an open circle. My variable is on the left which means my sign is showing me the way my arrow should point. Looking for numbers that are greater than 36, negative 36. All right, down here we have a multiplication ones. So how are we going to undo multiplication? I'm going to undo it by dividing. I want to get my variable by itself, so I'm going to divide by negative 12. What you'll notice is we divided by a negative number, so that means my sign has to flip-flop. It needs to face the opposite direction. Um, 96, and I'm going to cheat and use my calculator, divided by negative 12. Um, there's one negative sign, so it's going to be negative. It goes in there eight times, so negative eight. So I'm looking for values of w that are greater than negative eight. That's what will make this a true statement. So we're going to mark this on our line. Negative eight is the number we're going to mark. It's not equal to, so I'm going to use an open sign. My variable's on the left, so I can use my trick of just following the sign for the way that my arrow will point. Numbers that are greater than negative 8 are going to be to the right. All right, over here you'll notice our variable's on the opposite side. Don't let that throw you off. We're still solving it the exact same way. Here I'm multiplying. I'm going to undo my multiplication by dividing. Since I divided this side by 3, I also need to divide this side by 3. It was a positive number, so don't flip this. This is still facing the same way. I'm left with x on this side. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So if we're going to graph that, I need to mark 3 on my line. It can be equal to 3, so I'm using a closed circle. Now, I can't use my trick for the way my arrow points because my, var my variable is on the wrong side. So I just read it backwards. X is greater than 3, that means I'm looking for numbers that are bigger than 3, which is always going to be to the right on a number line. Um, again, if you're having any confusion on this, please re-watch the video. You can slow it down, you can pause it, you can try the problems on your own, and then play the tape to make sure they're right. And again, ask me questions, um, multiple ways you can do that. Uh, you guys have a great night, and then I'll see you tomorrow.